So, I, I, I just uh, binged through High Guardian Spice, and I have some opinions. <laughs> I, I feel like my brain is melting right now. Maybe I should not have just watched the entire thing without any freaking spaces in between. I uh, I should not have done this. Oh my god. Honestly, um, that was a way to spend to to waste a spare day i guess <laughs> that was a way to waste a weekend <laughs> or i don't know our party's weekends i have no idea um so i don't know what i should talk about honestly wait i'm a, i'm gonna I'm go and and make some bullet points <laughs> it's like some talking points, like the ply characters, the freaking voice acting, which is obnoxiously bad, by the way. <laughs> they were not- they were not kidding when they said that it was obnoxiously bad. It, it is. It is. The animation is fine, kind of. It's nothing good, but it's nothing too bad either. It's passable, except for the part where for the parts where it's obviously like lower resolution and it's a zoom and <laughs> and this this zoom was not meant for the image of this size and and it looks like a bunch of pixels are on the screen all right now that i've had a uh, like two drinks of water a chocolate cookie and uh, and now that i've written down the talking points i can <laughs> Hopefully, have any coherent thought that I can express. The first thing that I should talk about is plot. You see, I think that the biggest issue with the plot of the of the series is that it is very clear that they had no idea what they were doing in the first like what four episodes. Or maybe it's just uh, me getting numb to all the stupid stuff and just... <laughs> maybe I just stop noticing after a while that, you know, they have no idea what they're doing. But the first few... The first few episodes felt extremely incoherent. Like, that felt like the writers were chasing after every idea that they had in their heads. Like... There is this subplot, like, for example, episode two, episode two. So it starts with, like, the three headmistresses just uh, saying that, hey, you have to do the vowel thing, the vowel thing, you just have to talk into a hole, which technically not a hole, it's a well, but, I mean, a well is a hole with water. A decorated hole with water in it and a purpose. Yeah, so... <laughs> uh, I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty much how the writing felt. <laughs> uh, they were so busy just uh, writing in their Twitter moments, they forgot that the plot was actually there. Just like I am doing right now. This is not my incompetence, this is... This is actually be me being super meta, yeah. <laughs> so now that I remembered what I'm talking about... So in the episodes 2, they're talking that they have to talk into the hole. And uh, then it is paid no mind until the rest of the episode. You would think... You would think that it would lead to something. You would think that... You know, there is something important that the episode is going to be centered around this. That, you know, each character is going to figure out what they want to do in life and uh, just uh, vow into the hole. <laughs> but they don't. The entire sep episode is centered around God knows freaking what, honestly. 
what the hell was even this episode about? It, the only thing I can think of right now is just world building. It's just figuring out what classes they are going to. Yeah, the only purpose of this second episode, the only the, the purpose of the episode that wasted my 24 freaking minutes of my life was just to build the fact to build up the fact that hey, we have teachers and classes and lessons. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. This is not explored in any meaningful way. By the way, it's not the the vows are never brought up again before or after. They just disappear. They stayed in the hole we were they were put in. And by the way, it would be a neat idea to at least characterize who the hell we're talking whoever the hell we're talking about, whoever the hell is our main character, but <sighs> No, no, it's it's not. It's it's because of the audio mixing. I could barely hear what they were saying. Seriously, they would all they all have varying volumes to their voices, and they, I could barely hear what some of the characters was saying. And the the person, the only person that was coming in clear, the only person that I could hear properly is the one who talked about how she wants to protect ghosts or whatever. So, yeah, that's that's some useful freaking information right here, huh? Thankfully, it gets a lot more fo focu focused after <laughs> that point, but it's really hard to figure out. It's really hard to stay past that, honestly. I don't blame anybody who just dropped this crap. I I honestly would have dropped it too, but I'm a completionist and I have way too much free time on my hands. So, uh, the the dialogue also suffers from this problem. It it feels like very awkward. It's it often starts off fine, <laughs> but then it starts to go on. Like, for example, in the first episode, the main character, Rosemary, said that, Oh my god, I'm so excited and I could explode, and it would have been a fine line on its own, but then it just goes on into this very awkward dialogue scene where uh, they're like, No, you're not going to explode. Oh yes, I'm going to explode. Oh yeah, no, you're <laughs> going to explode. Uh, yes, I'm... I'm actually a, a terrorist, but ba boom. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It didn't happen. I wish it would happen. <laughs> it would have made it a lot more interesting. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what I'm saying is that it feels like uh, a lot. It it feels like it started off as being normal, and then it was written by an AI. Like it. The dialogue often feels like it was written by an AI who was uh, forced to sit through four hours of Tumblr memes and was led to believe that this is how real human people talk. Like, people who said that this show was written by Tumblr are not joking, it is. It is. I'm serious. And uh, the plot is not that interesting as well. It's... Something about, oh, hey, uh, so, uh, something shady is going on, and it kind of ends on a cliffhanger, and uh, sorry for spoilers, but the whole school gets yeeted, <laughs> the whole school gets uh, burned, and uh, which is on it. It gets kind of interesting at the, at the, in the last two episodes is where it gets interesting because, yeah, I'm pretty sure that whoever's watching it doesn't care about spoilers, so this is, this is where the blood and the gore starts to come in, I guess. It's not like the blood and the gore are necessary to make a show interesting. I mean, I watched Sophia the First sometimes as my pastime, but... God, was it a lot more interesting to see some actual drama and not everybody just weeping about stupid stuff for no reason. Like, come on. <laughs> Seeing a character being sad because they're feeling sad because they're feeling sad, I guess. 
is one thing, but seeing a character being sad because they accidentally killed somebody and their friend had to finish the job so that the per poor poor creature does not, you know, die and suffer. It's it's a whole lot of it's it's a lot. It it's it's a it's another thing. It's much. I mean, you could say it's just one thing is a little bit more interesting to watch than the other. <laughs> you know. I don't know. I guess that was supposed to be a, uh, a sad moment, but at, when they killed it, like whoever watched it knows what I'm talking about. When when Sage killed the dragon thing, the underwater dragon thing, <laughs> I was just so happy. I was like, "Yes, finally, some actual drama!" Yeah, <laughs> something that is actually interesting to see. And not just some stupid stuff. Finally, some actual freaking narrative stakes in this epic epic adventure thing that that's supposed to be, you know, epic and interesting. And honestly, if you cut cut out like the first what four episodes, you ain't losing nothing. <laughs> you're not going to lose anything except for a tiny bit of world building, and you're gonna get a lot. A lot more interesting stuff, like seriously, just skip past the f first, like, I don't know how many, uh, just... I mean, overall, just don't waste your time on it, but you're, if you're gonna watch it, then watch the first, watch the beginning at your own risk, honestly. <laughs> now that we're done with the plot i guess we're kind of done with the plot there's probably a lot more i can say about it but i'm honestly not willing to give the time uh, to give it the time of day and actually write the freaking script i'm just going off just like this i just like i said i i literally just binged it <laughs> And, and I have some opinions to say, and now I need to express myself, or else I am going to explode. Alright, characters. Now we're talking about characters. Everybody are boring. Honestly. Everybody except for, what, es Esmerillus? I think that was her name. Amy. I'm gonna call her Amy. Amy was the only person that was remotely interesting in this entire freaking shit show. Uh, because she was the only person that had a f some freaking flavor to it. She was the only one who had a punch, who had charisma, who had any semblance of a personality that it cannot be as described in one single s freaking word, softy. Seriously, she's the only one who is not described in Oh, she's such a quirky, nice girl. Oh. Like she is the she she's the only person that I can actually say something about. About the actions of her I can say something about. Honestly, I my favorite out of the four out of the four <laughs> characters uh, out of the four main characters, uh, Sage, Rosemary, Parsley, and Time, my favorite is, uh, definitely Parsley, because she's the only one who's got her shit together. Like, uh, when... <laughs> when Sage, uh, said that, hey, you're the... <laughs> you're, uh, you're the moral of the group, Rosemary, I was like, no. No, it's freaking Parsley. Rosemary can't do shit when it comes to moral. Just... This, those characters are all super soft. All the rest of the characters are all super soft and weep all the time. Like, every episode is about their freaking interpersonal conflicts. And I get it. Interpersonal conflicts can be interesting, but... After some freaking time, it gets really old. Really old. Do you know, like, the feeling of uh, having a friend that comes to you only when they want to vent? This is exactly what I'm talking about here. This is the feeling that I've got. Like, they are just venting and sulking and moping and crying all the fucking time. They're getting nothing done. 
or they're getting a little too nothing got done. At least the uh, freaking last two episodes, something interesting was happening, like I said. The rest of the time, they're like, oh, you offended me with doing this. Oh, I was sad. I am sad because because someone said something to me. And then it just goes to nowhere. They, this just gets solved in a freaking... <laughs> In a really... how do I say it? Uh... Uh... In a, in a very childish way, I guess. It, it, it's all sold with hugs and quirky freaking situations and freaking saying sorry, you know, because... The actions that characters take are... Yeah, I guess I'm not annoyed at the conflicts, I'm annoyed at how they're done. Because conflicts can be good, Con conflicts can be painful, conflicts can be interesting. But this is not the case. There are so many conflicts that each of them is given very little time to breathe. They develop in almost no time. <laughs> almost over nothing. Almost, uh, and they get freaking decided almost as fast, and uh, they just all feel freaking meaningless. They all feel so meaningless, especially, like, uh, one of the things that I remember <laughs> is that, uh, uh, Sa Sage and Rosemary got annoyed to each other at, like, a Halloween party. At a Halloween festival because of uh, schedule problems, <laughs> of uh, just Sage wanting to go to one event and Rosemary wanting to go to the other, and they just went like, "Oh, God damn it!" And and they they just got there, <laughs> and their relationship was just freaking ruined over that. Like honestly, I'm I'm always siding with uh, <laughs> Amaryllis here, just uh, with Amy, because she was just standing there in the background looking this, at this whole thing and laughing, and honestly, what a freaking... This character, this character gives me hope for, for anything, I don't know. <laughs> this character is the only one that makes the show breathe. This character is the only one that gives the show, again, a remote freaking sense of personality. This character is the only one who's not playing it safe. <sighs> yeah. And also another thing that I feel like I must mention is the constant shipping bait. Like, the writers think they're sneaky with this. No, they're not. What is all with the attempts to ship all of the characters between each other? What's with that? Like, seriously, there are so many moments that could be uh, thought of as romantic that I'm honestly kind of confused. <laughs> I'm honestly kind of confused as to how I'm supposed to take them, so... I guess I'll just mention the fact that it has this show has a lot of shipping bait, and I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> now, the another thing that's written down on my little list of talking points over here is voice acting. Now, obviously, voice acting is not good in there. Like, there was, there is one line that I can remember in the entire thing that was voice acted actually kind of well, because, yeah, it was the the shapeshifter guy that was like, ooh, I don't remember what exactly he said by the way, but the way he said it was super evil. This was honestly the only well pitched. Nicely done, voice acted line that I've heard in in the entire show, I think. Other than that, yeah, it's either flat or it's slime boy. And I'm pretty sure if you manage to get to here, then you already know what the hell is up with slime boy. Seriously, this guy, this guy. Freaking slime boy, am I right? <laughs> Honestly, just, 
the voice acting sounds about as consistent as my voice over here. And it sounds about as awkward as I do when I turn on the mic and just start, you know, babbling about stuff. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, not, uh, yeah, the voice acting is not good. The animation... The animation is passable. I mean, again, if you kind of don't consider, like, a couple of errors, I don't know. I Maybe it's because I haven't watched it that attentively. Maybe it's because I haven't watched it that attentively, but honestly, in some parts, animation's alright. In other parts, it's... Uh, it's moving, I guess. <laughs> it's passable. It's barely passable, but it's passable. And I mean, yeah, sure. The only problem with it, I think, is that it's super slow. Like, if you have low budget and uh, you want to do comedy, why why do you make it so slow? This is the problem that Winx has, by the way. I am going to rant about Winx as animation someday. I am... I am going to do this one day, one fine day, but I'm, I'm going off on a tangent. Although this entire thing is a tangent, I guess. <laughs> Alright, so now we're on to the conclusions part of the video, and what do I have to say, but... Boy, does this show give me hope. Hope for if this shit can fly, then my shit can fly too. I don't care if this came out wrong, I'm sticking to it. Just seriously, this gives hope for all the writers, all the artists, all the comic book artists, all of the animators out there that their show will finally air someday. Someday, because if this managed to wear, that means that the industry has very little standards. And that means that we can just, you know, do stuff now. <laughs> we can... If, if we get the right connections, I guess. And uh, we don't even need to work hard enough. We just... We just need to... D j just, you know, look into it. <laughs> Uh, overall, this show was, uh, it's, I think it would not have the hate that it had if it were not for its creator, just, you know, writing Kill All Man on Twitter or Tumblr or wherever the hell it happened. I don't know, I don't think it's fair to judge uh, an entire, like, <laughs> I don't think it's fair to judge uh, an entire property based of uh, one of the staff members. Even if it is an excuse, an, an, uh, an important staff member, but still. They shouldn't have politicized themselves so much, because, yeah, of course people are not going to like it. People are just going to hate watch it, and they're gonna pirate it, so Crunchyroll isn't getting money. <laughs> that much, at least. As it could, not as much as it could have. So... I don't think that it would have gotten the same hate that it that it did if it were not for its poor advertising. I'm pretty sure that everybody would have just forgotten about it the moment it came out. Just, oh, hey, a show came out. Okay, it, it did, so... Yeah, it, it exists. Now we're forgetting about it. That's it. <laughs> it happened and it passed. Uh, but now, I don't know, maybe we'll get an abridged series. Uh, I hope for it. I definitely do hope for it. Because uh, I really like abridged series if they're not too long. Uh, <laughs> uh, th thank you for listening to my ramblings. To my very, very incoherent ramblings. <laughs> Uh, if you manage to actually make it to the end, wow, I, I salute you. If you didn't, I don't blame you, honestly. I wouldn't have made it to the end of my own video, probably, because... I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I, just, I just needed to, like, vent about this freaking thing that happened here. 
just I I don't want to feel like I've spent four hours of my life just watching this on nothing although the show did feel like nothing afterwards like I did not acquire anything and I did not lose anything except for four hours of my time in the spare day I could have been doing my assignments today but oh well <laughs> I guess I did not do that I guess I'm just gonna freak out about them tomorrow all right <laughs> now that'll be it <laughs> Th thanks, I did not expect this for this to be this long. S see ya! <laughs> Bye!